The technology inside this Commarker B6 laser is insane. It's the most compact 60 watt fiber laser you can buy, but get this, the size is actually the least interesting thing you're gonna find here. And that's because the most impressive feature of the B6 is that 60 watt MOPA laser module that's packed inside that little box. This thing's gonna blow your mind. Let's take a look. Hey, Steve here. Now, in this video, I'm gonna look at the Commarker B6 MOPA laser, and I have the 60 watt version. Now, we're gonna start by asking the most obvious question. What the heck is a MOPA? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Uh, MOPA is an acronym. It stands for Master Oscillator Power Amplifier. And that's kind of a big gobbledygook term, but basically what it means is there's an optical amplifier built into the laser. It's essentially a fiber laser, but it's got some extra uh, capability. MOPA lasers are really different from fiber lasers in three kind of major ways and I'll, I'll talk about those and then I'll, I'll talk about some other things but the first one is pulse duration. MOPA lasers have variable pulse duration where fiber lasers generally have a fixed pulse duration and that pulse duration is 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 the thing you'll see called Q pulse and really what that means is a, a longer Q pulse means that the, the laser's turned on for longer which means you'll get a little more uh, engraving capability uh, on, on a piece of material. Uh, the second thing is, is around materials themselves. MOPA lasers are just generally better at marking some sensitive materials, so things like aluminum and plastic. Fiber lasers are better for high quality marking on mostly metals, so keep that in mind. Uh, and finally, the, the third major difference is cost. If you really want a MOPA laser, then you're going to expect to pay quite a bit more for it. It can be upwards of 30% more than a comparable fiber laser, so uh, be prepared for that. So this is where the salesman in me would say, but wait, there's more. And that's because there's two other important aspects here related to MOPA lasers. The first is heat management. MOPA lasers generate less heat when they're engraving than a comparable fiber laser. And what that means is there's less chance of damaging the material if you've engraved with a fiber laser on even those thin business cards. Uh, you'll see that it'll warp them even with fairly little power. It doesn't happen quite as much on MOPAs, although you can make it happen. The second aspect is one we're going to talk about a bit more in the, later in the video is color marking. MOPA lasers are the only lasers that can really do color marking on stainless steel. You'll see some of the diode laser companies talking about this, but it's, it's kind of gimmicky on a diode laser. Here on a MOPA laser, you can get predictable color engraving, and we'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of that later on. So those are the two aspects, and those are two key things that might be reasons why you want a, a MOPA laser over a regular fiber laser, but again, you have to weigh that versus the cost. And that's enough detail to get started talking about the all-new Commarker B6 MOPA laser. I brought up a spec sheet here. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this stuff in detail because Commarker has all of this information up on their website. But I'll call out a couple of things here. First is the laser configurations. There's three of them. There's a 20, 30, and 60 watt laser configuration. I have the 60 for this video. Uh, also on the physical side, the, the physical dimensions, this, I believe, is the smallest MOPA laser you can buy. It's very compact but you don't sacrifice any work area compared to any of the competitors to this product. And it's also very light compared to, compared to its competitors at 13 and a half kilograms. So it, you can pick it up and move it around if you need to, and it doesn't use much space on your workbench. Now, price-wise, these prices look big, but relative to the competitors, they're, they're definitely competitive, if not a little cheaper. Uh, entry level at the 20 watt MOPA price starts around just shy of $3,100 and this laser tops out at about $4,600 for the, for the 60 watt. So these are all US prices. Now that doesn't include uh, an enclosure, it doesn't include a, a rotary attachment. If you need those, you'll have to buy those separately. I got the laser down on, on a bench here and, and just a quick flyover. You can see this laser is very compact, I mentioned that. Looking at the front panel, you have an e-stop, the power switch, uh, some up and down buttons. There's also up and down on the tower itself, up on the display, and you have autofocus on this laser, and we can talk a bit more about that. There's also an advanced setting there if you want to see what the laser is actually doing when it's focusing. If, you're, if you want to do manual focusing, there's the knob up on top that you can turn, and of course on the front panel, you can use the up and down buttons to, to move the, the tower up and down. So that's the focus. Now rolling around to the back, we have a connector for the rotary, a connector for the foot pedal, 
a connector for the enclosure if you have one. There's a connector to connect power to the to the tower and a USB for your computer. Other things you get in the box, goggles, uh, a, 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 folk, a squaring tool for the workspace, the pedal, the foot pedal, and a driver for uh, for the rotary if you if you want to get a rotary tool. There's also this tower extender and it just drops in under the, the existing tower. You loosen those four screws and put uh, put the tower in there and, and turn four additional screws in. Now I'll just mention one more thing here. If you don't want to stack the, the whole laser, you can actually separate the base loosening these four screws and you can set that aside and then you can move the the actual laser box itself uh, to another location. There's about a four foot, three, four foot um, umbilical cord so you can move it and it's really not that hard. Now the last thing I'll mention here is autofocus. There's a red dot on the workspace and if you put a piece of material on there so that the red dot is on it then you can just hit the auto button up on top and the laser will just automatically focus. Works really well. I did have one false positive in all the times I've been using this laser but in general it's, it works perfectly. Now the other thing I'll, I'll call out here is you can get an error message up on the top display and that's if you raise the, the laser head up too high above 280 millimeters or too low then you'll get this error message. You can still move the laser around but what it's telling you is it can't focus so you're going to get a terrible laser job if you try to engrave at this. So keep that in mind as well. So I don't normally talk about device installation, but I'll do it here. Click the devices button and go into, into setup, do a discovery, find my laser. And uh, whenever it comes back, you'll see that, that there's a laser there. It's all basically configured at that point. Uh, just hit next and then install. Now you have to install the actual driver for this laser. So that's a case of going to the USB drive that came with the laser and going and finding that CFG file, that Mark 7 CFG file. Basically you're done at this point. You can give the laser a name, then uh, you can enter the size manually. I'm not sure why it's not correct here. I think that's just a bug in, in the driver file. So 150 by 150 is what I have. And uh, that's it. The laser is basically configured. Now you can go to device settings. You can load the correction file. And uh, that is also on the, on the USB stick that came with the laser. Now I, I tend to do manual configuration later. I'll put a link up in the corner here if you want to go watch a video that I created on doing a, a laser calibration for Galvo lasers. But I'll use the correction file here for now. And uh, really that's it. You click OK and your laser should be ready to go. Now before I go blundering off, drawing a bunch of things with a laser, I thought I'd, it, it would be prudent to actually do a quick test. So I popped into Lightburn and I just dropped a square on the workspace and centered it and then went into settings and set up a layer. Uh, just some pseudo random <laughs> values but I know that it'll engrave but not try and burn through anything. So you can see the, the values there and then shot it over to the laser. I, I laid down a piece of material and you can see the red dot. That's the focus dot. So you, you need to be there to focus and then uh, fired the laser and it, it drew the square and it came out underneath the framing. So everything looked good at that point. And we're ready to just now start plowing through a bunch of materials and see what we can create. So with the laser now tested and working, I just popped in a simple project. This one actually is a project provided on the USB stick. It's just some, I don't know, Norse goddess or superhero of some sort. And uh, I'll start out here in real time and then I'll go about 30 times just so we can get through the job quickly. And you can see the result. Uh, it looks remarkable and, you know, there's absolutely no complaint there. So metal business cards, two thumbs up. Sticking with the metals, I took a stainless steel keychain and dropped it down here and put my channel logo on it. Uh, just a threshold engrave, so nothing fancy, but it came out crisp, clear, very readable, and I'm quite happy with this. The next metal to talk about is brass, and I found this spider image on the USB stick that came with the laser that Comarker provided, and I engraved it onto a coin. I'm not going to show you the engraving because it's just a bunch of laser going back and forth, but the Commarker B6 did a fantastic job here. You can see this spider is very deep and very crisp. It's so deep, in fact, that I couldn't actually engrave anything on the other side of the coin, uh, just because this is a fairly thin coin and I would actually engrave right through it. But the result looks, looks great. 
So one last thing I did uh, on the standard metal engraving side was I took this wrench and I engraved my logo on it. If you have tools that go missing quite often because people are wandering around your shop, you might want to do this. It took, uh, it was very little time to do. That was a real time engrave and you can see the result is my logo is on a wrench. Next, I wanted to create something that wasn't on metal. So I pulled a couple of sleek coasters off the shelf and I AI generated this, this Viking. Now this image is a bas relief. It's not a height map. So it, the output will look quite different for this, but uh, I threw it on the laser. I did the engrave. I'm not gonna show you the whole engrave because it took quite long, but just to appease myself, I did a height map for the same image and engraved that. And it came out really nice as well. Uh, it's a little harder to see because you don't get that nice contrast on slate. Uh, you don't get reflected light basically because it's a flat surface. But I'll show you both of them side by side here and you can see the difference. I'll move the light around so you can get a, a sense of the height as well. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video that one of the key features of MOPA lasers is the ability to do color engraving on stainless steel. Now diode laser companies have been trying to sell this feature for a long time and honestly while they can do color you really don't get predictability with a diode laser. Well that's quite different here on a MOPA laser. As long as you're using the same material every time you, you engrave a certain color with using a particular set of settings you'll get the same color and it doesn't vary a whole lot but if you change materials it will. Now the result is you can do really cool things like this and and get reasonably accurate coloring. It's a bit washed out, but here's the bad news. It takes a lot of work. You do a lot of material testing and more and more and more and more. So you just have to create uh, the ability to understand what the setting will be for a particular color. And, and once you build all of this stuff for a particular material, it it's done, but it does take a lot of work up front. And that work comes in the form of running a bunch of material tests. I mentioned you run a lot of them. And I'll just quickly set up one here, a frequency versus Q pulse. Now, I don't know what the settings are initially, so I kind of have to guess. But I'll run a test, and you can see if, if I run this on a stainless steel business card, I get some results. Now, that might not be what I want, so I can run different dimensions. I can run uh, maybe a speed versus frequency test. And when I do that, I'll get something like this, where you can see that there's actually quite an, an obvious pattern here. Now, you do have to understand how sensitive these changes are because in that example, the, the interval was 0 0.001, and I ran another one where the only change was changing that to 0 0.002 millimeters. And when I bring up the card side by side here, you can see quite a dramatic change. So you end up running a whole bunch of these tests and collecting these cards so that for any color you want, you, can, you know what you need. And why would you want that? Well, I, I mentioned that one of the things I do is, is make uh, these stainless steel keychains. And you can see here where I have this, this Firebird keychain where I actually got the colors I wanted and I literally just picked them off of, off of one of those cards I just engraved. Now, in addition to engraving, there's a few other things you can do with, uh, with a, certainly a fiber laser, but definitely a MOPA laser. And one of the things you can do is you can do some rudimentary cutting. So I decided to take a metal business card and cut out a pair of simple earrings. So I loaded them into Lightburn and I picked some settings here that will, uh, will do the cutting. I put a business card down cut out my my earrings now these you will have to manually pop these these pieces out because the laser cuts it and then it's melted so it refuses sometimes and they pop out really easily if you have a dental pick or a or a, a weeding tool and you can see when you're done you get a something that looks like an earring now there's one other thing you can do is you can remove rust now i don't have anything that's particularly rusty but i did have the, have my set of pliers here that was kind of dingy and i ran a, a quick rust clearing uh, path on it and it cleaned them up really nicely so uh, you can also do that kind of thing so maybe there's a business for rust removal in your future as well so overall, I'm pretty impressed with the Commarker B660 watt MOPA laser. Uh, it just does a lot more than I expected and it does things really well. But I always like to talk about some things that uh, specifics around why I like it, but also I mention a few things that I think 
that com marker in this case could do a little better to improve this laser on the pro side i love the autofocus i think it is absolutely the way to go for any galvo fiber laser and hopefully more uh, manufacturers adopt this this strategy uh, color engraving of course which is mopa unique uh, that worked really well and i now have a vast collection of color settings that i can use for things and and finally on the pro side here i like the the compact size of this laser it doesn't sacrifice work area but it's still very small and doesn't take up a whole lot of my workbench and and that's important because i'm going to keep this laser in my workshop for a while and I'll do some more projects that are related to this laser, so look for those in, in the not too distant future. Now on the con side, there were a couple of things here I think Commarker could improve on. I found the tower that holds the, the laser head above the workspace a little bit flimsy. I think there's a design issue there because it just doesn't seem that the tolerances are tight enough and it allows the laser head to move with the slightest bump and I bumped it a couple of times and it was enough to, to kind of ruin the job I was working on. So I really think they should improve that. They also provide a material library, which I was excited about. And uh, it's okay. I found it a bit lacking on the number of materials it covers. And also the settings for those materials aren't the best. Most of them are okay, but they're not, they're not as accurate as, as a lot of people are gonna want. So. At best, it's a starting point and you're then going to want to refine the settings for your own situation. And finally here, uh, price. People coming from, say, the diode laser world and they're upgrading are going to be shocked with the price. I don't think this laser is overpriced by any means. In fact, I think they compete very aggressively with uh, some of the other 60-watt MOPA laser companies. Now, you can leave a comment down below that says the price is too high, but be, understand it doesn't really add a whole lot to the, to the conversation. However, leave other comments if you, if you really want to stimulate things or you want to find out more about this laser. I'm happy to answer those. And if you are interested in picking one of these lasers up, I'll put an affiliate link in the description down below. If you are interested in Galvo lasers in general, then I'll Put another video up in the corner here it's it's another com marker laser but it's a it's a uv laser the omni one it's also a laser that you'll find in my shop because i've just had so much fun doing things with it and uh, continue to enjoy what it's capable of and with that i'll wind down i'll say get out there make your world and i'll see you next time